morning and welcome to The Review, the Instagram live podcast where Kandama news and culture is shared over the warmth of coffee. Today's guest, Max Norcross, Sweets Kandama's pro and Rage Quit Sucks member, joins me to talk through his personal journey with Kandama and his newfound direction in life. Along with this conversation, we're going to be diving into the stories detailed on his brand new pro mod featured right here. Uh, this thing is beautiful and I can't wait to hear from Max himself a lot of the stories that go into the design of this Ken. For those of you wondering, this is episode 15, The Drip on Max Norcross, The Phoenix Rises. As always, those of you that are joining in for the Instagram live experience of this episode, let me know down in the chat what you are drinking this morning. I am drinking something super special. Uh, this is a cup of coffee. It's a Colombian, AeroPress as usual, from a guy named Seth Taylor out in Ontario. Now, Seth Taylor does something really unique. He actually does coffee by design. And what he means by that is he does really small batch and really quick batch roasted. So he roasts it and then ships it almost immediately. So this came to me like, what, three days fresh? Like it was shipped out the day it was roasted. So this is like incredibly fresh, consistent and high quality coffee. So if you're from Canada and you want some good coffee, definitely go check out Seth Taylor CBD. That's Seth Taylor coffee by design on Instagram. Let me see what you guys are drinking down in the chat and we will get Max in here in just a couple minutes. Um, let me know what you're drinking. Let's see. Haley Bischoff is drinking a random blend from the store. French pressed. Good stuff. A Colombian plan planados from the Coffee Ethic. Good stuff, Danny. I love the stuff that you sent me from the Coffee Ethic. Great roast. Uh, really big fan of it. Kendama Goat. He's drinking that instant coffee. My guy. Uh, we got Pai Dama with his Americano. And we got, oh, Kanama Goat also with his G Fuel. We got McCafe Instant Coffee from Toff Mama Dama. Starbucks Expr Espresso Baby, Namasean from Gino. Filter Coffee for Days. Inward Lunar's drinking his whole bean Starbucks coffee. Good stuff. I love this. There are so many of you guys in the chat. This is a very exciting episode for myself. Uh, and I hope an incredibly exciting episode for all of you guys. To give you a little bit of a look into what's going to go on in this episode, uh, we are going to be talking about two things primarily. We're going to bring Max on here and we're going to talk about his story. Uh, we're not going to dive in too much into his Kendama play or his past experiences uh, with Kendama specifically related to competitions because you can find a lot of that info already via his old edits, via his MKO 17 win, those things. I, I want to go a little bit deeper. And so today, Max and I are going to get a little real here. We're going to talk about his story, his pro mod, and some of the stories that go into this design. As always, uh, we do have sections set aside during this episode for live Q&A. There's a few questions that were sent in ahead of time, uh, but we would, love ep uh, we would love questions also submitted during the episode. And the way you can do that is by putting your questions in that question box down at the bottom. That's the live Q&A tool. But if you just want to comment and interact, go ahead and put those in the comments section. That said, I'm going to send the request for Max to jump in here right away and let's get this review started. I just got to find him. There are so many of you guys in today. We will get him on here. And can you guys give Max a warm welcome as he joins in? We still got Kendama Goat also drinking that red roast bowl. Love it. Max, hello, welcome hello. to the review. Review, I like it. Dude, how you doing? Pretty good. I'm uh, drinking a uh, light red roast. I think it's from a Gatorade Cafe. From the Gatorade Cafe. <laughs> yeah, I am. I thought I'd put it in a mug and be more appropriate, you know? Mm. I respect it. I respect it. It may not be coffee, but... But you know what? It gets the job done. It got you here. Yeah. And I'm stoked on that. You're in Spokane right now, right? Yeah, we're in Spokane. And uh, it's like we in Seattle and over here in Spokane, it's unhealthy air quality. So like technically I like, oh, shouldn't no. be outside, but it's it's OK for right now. Wow. But shout it, out. It's just crazy. All the fires, dude. It's yeah. Max taking risks for the review. That's crazy. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Dude, Max, thank you so much for joining in today. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited for this interview. I'm really excited to hear more of your story and get a little bit more behind the Ken, behind the stories that people have already heard and dive a little bit deeper. Uh, when we chatted about doing this episode, uh, we, we talked about some really cool things and I'm excited to dive into it. Um, but before we do, 
I like to ask three questions always to every guest that comes on. Uh, and, and they're real simple questions, but I think they kick things off well. Are okay. you a coffee drinker? Well, it's funny. Um, I'm going to go inside real quick while that garbage truck goes by. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because I always give coffee a chance, but every single time I hate it. And like, it's not that I hate it. It just, uh, I don't, I don't know. I try to act like I'm older and more mature. So I try to drink coffee to like match that. And it just, I, I don't think I've gotten the right roasts or anything. Um, but the funny thing is, is the only time that I really actually enjoy coffee is when Jake Weens himself is mm -hmm. making me some kind of roast. And then he just dives in and explains why it's so good. You know, it's from this place. And, you know, you know him. He's a coffee oh, yeah. connoisseur. So the only time I enjoy coffee is when Jake Weems is serving it up fourth, fourth cup cafe style. Yes. Oh, fourth cup. We had Jake Weems on the preview, I think, two weeks back now. And we were talking all about the fourth cup and how, how coffee, and, and specifically for Jake, is more than just a drink. It's a presentation. It's an art form. And, yeah. and if you, for those of you that have ever seen Jake live and in person doing the fourth cup cafe at an event, you know that it's more than just a cup of coffee because it is presentation down to its finest. And that's everything Jake does. Everything Jake does is art. Yeah, exactly. So it just it fits him. But yeah, like on my own, though, I would love to be able to like get into coffee and have a, like a good tasting one. But right now I've been like off the Red Bull and that stuff makes you, it makes your stomach look like uh, probably, I don't know, shredded up <laughs> disgustingness. I'm probably, I don't know. But uh, now I've been on the Yerba game. Oh, okay. Colin Hislop came over and filmed part of the ProMod video and he had some Yerba and he's like, dude, you need to get on the Yerba game. And I was like, I don't know nothing about the Yerba game. All I see is Josh Grove drinking it and gave it a chance, and now I drink like two a day. Right it's on. an expensive habit, though. They're I, like two ninety nine. I haven't tried the Yerba gang yet, so maybe maybe I'll have to give it a chance here soon. Yeah. Okay, uh, second question. Mm -hmm. All-time favorite trick from history, one that you've done or one that other people have done that you just love, your all-time favorite trick on Kendama. All-time favorite trick. Oh my gosh. It doesn't uh, even have to be complicated. It could be a classic whirlwind. Yeah. All time favorite trick. Well, for me, like myself personally, um, it's like a video. I forget which video it's in, but it, I just do. It's the first time I ever did a behind the back. Like I toss this UFO and then I go and catch it behind the back like this and scoop it. Yeah. And, and that trick took me forever. And it took so long to figure out how to do that. So that's like my favorite for myself personally. But then all the stuff that like Adrian Esteban and uh, Ben Harold are doing where it's mm. like it ends up, you know, some string variation, blah, 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 comes around. They do all these crazy moves and then it just automatically spikes onto itself. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of the tricks that I'm really into right now. Like anything that just goes into itself or spikes into itself. Mm -hmm, where it's mm -hmm. not like very technical. like the auto the auto spike stuff right now yeah exactly it's oh, like, I, I can't do any of that it is so impressive i i get so frustrated trying because i feel like it's like it's all fluke but then you yeah. see people like adrian who actually are consistent with it and there's a strategy yeah exactly and they get to this point where it like comes right here and the string just tightens up and makes it go in and it's like oh. dude how did you do that like, it's so cool yeah exactly. so cool Okay, then last question before we dive into the, to the meat of the conversation. Uh, mm -hmm. Who is your all-time favorite player or person in the Konami community that you look up to the most? Well, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Ben Harold is your favorite pro's favorite pro. So I really like him just in general as a person and uh, tricks-wise and him pushing the game. Like, I think that him I look up to the most in just like an all-around aspect um, mm -hmm. but I think one of the people that I look up to the most is honestly, like you have to give it up for sweets because mm -hmm. like a lot of what the community doesn't see and doesn't know is everyone knows that sweets is a great guy. I'm not about to like expose him or anything. <laughs> like, don't worry, but <laughs> he's like a great guy and everyone knows that, but nobody sees like behind the scenes of like how much he actually cares about Dama and how much he's like, personally struggled to make 
kendama like still be a thing and still happen and still make mm -hmm. sweets kendama as a company like it has not been an easy road for anyone especially at sweets kendamas and they just continue to push and they they believe in it so much that they continue that and so you mm -hmm. just got to give up mm -hmm. mad credits to that dude yeah. for like sticking it together and just becoming one of the top co like companies in the industry oh yeah so, absolutely undeniably Matt yeah. Sweets has progressed Kendama in ways that uh, a lot of other companies look up to. Like we, right. we would not be where we're at in the Kendama community. I probably would not have a podcast within the Kendama community uh, where I get wow. to interview some of my favorite people if not for some of the growth that Matt Sweets put forward. Without Matt, Kendama definitely wouldn't be where it is at the moment. Yeah, so, it would be it would be different. Him. And there's also like you know big kudos and big contributions from everybody. Right? It's not just Sweets, but he definitely had like a very big part in mm -hmm. helping push. And I mean, come on, like going into target, good move, you know, like yeah. th then it's just seen by the masses and the more Kendama is like normalized, then you have older people, younger people, you know, girls, boys, anything like anyone. And so mm -hmm. you don't have a lot more people seeing it. And just because of that target thing. So absolutely, yeah, I, I gotta say Matt sweets is like one of the people that I look up to also you like, started bringing me on trips and I was like, okay, what's up? let's go. <laughs> yeah. He, he definitely was probably a, a significant part of your growth. We could talk forever about Matt sweets. I'd love to get him on here one day and hear some more of his story too. So we'll save that for another day. Um, let's dive into a bit of your conversation your story here in a moment, but I just want to remind those of you that are tuning in live that if you have questions that you want to ask Max throughout the episode, we've dedicated a few spots throughout the episode to do your questions live. Uh, you can put those into the Q&A tool. That's that little rectangle at the bottom with the question mark. And we have some time a little ways into the interview and a little bit near to the end that we'll ask some of your questions. So make sure you pop those in there. But let's dive into the meat of the conversation and say hi to Zach Gallagher as he joins the combo. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see you seeing that. <laughs> hey, well, Max. I, I think they're I all at breakfast right now too. Like yeah, they're all a... here with me, but they're all at breakfast. And I just, I stayed back to do this. Also, oh, check awesome. this out, just as a side note, get a little, the one picture that's outside on this porch, it's like a little florally thing. Anyways. I love that. I love it. Well, Max, I think that it would be fair to say that a number of people in there, there's a ton of content out on the internet from you detailing a lot of the events you've been to, a lot of your experiences, uh, but mostly pertaining to Kendama and more recently on the Norx blog, a little bit more personal and your journeys, especially with Ernie. I love that golfing vlog that you guys went on. That was hilarious oh my God. Uh, yeah. for me. Ridiculous too. But I want to go back a little bit further for a few moments and, and ask, okay. what were you, what was the story of Max Norcross before Kendama ever entered your life? Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, because wow. so uh, to, to preface, I think so many of us have seen you just propel in your life and in your personality and your character, your innovation through Kendama specifically, as we've seen you win MKO, go on and compete internationally, travel, Nortz vlog, Swiss life. But I want to go back to the origin story a little bit here. Who were you? So it was August 4th, 1992. <laughs> I was born and no, um, yeah, that's what a what a crazy question. Um, well, beforehand, like I was 18 years old when I like discovered Kendama. And uh, before that, I it's kind of a crazy story. But like, my dad was living in Texas at the time. And my mom and me were living over here in Seattle. And uh I was just kind of like a little bit of like a reckless wild child. And I was really obsessed with skateboarding and skateboarding culture and just doing that every single day, no matter what, like anytime I can like skate down to the skate park mm -hmm. and it was like the skate park was miles away from my house. And there would be times where I'd either take the bus or I'd just go and just try to skate every day. But one of my favorite skaters was Bam Margera and this is like during the like we're heavy into the jackass area or era of videos and like Viva La Bam and stuff right, like right. that. And so I I kind of like wanted to be that, and like I I wanted to like do things that was like that were like that. And so I would have like 
little like random house party things at my house where we have a trampoline in my backyard and we would jump off my roof onto the trampoline. Like I was really trying to be like doing that kind of stuff. And then I took videos of this kind of stuff mm -hmm. as well. And I used to make videos and it's like really cringy and embarrassing. But like in seventh grade, I used to make videos of me doing like either skits or like I wanted to be like the Andy Milanakis show type thing. Oh like, yeah. Oh man. So I had like a bunch of different, you know, things that I was interested in, but uh, mostly it was sports. And it was like every day I'd either be playing basketball yeah. or I'd be playing football or baseball. And I grew up playing baseball and basketball and uh, like team sports. So that's why I was never into Kendama in, mm. at first because I was like, there's like, I don't see how you can be faster than somebody or like better than someone. Mm -hmm. And I think that I was a little bit focused on different, different things back then it's not like i was like a mean guy or like a bully or anything like mm -hmm. that i was just i would tell my friends to stop playing with it type thing you know what i mean and then when i finally picked up a kendama and played with it it like changed just my perspective on like not judging somebody before you can understand them or like right. judging anything before you can understand it you know, because if you yeah. don't know anything about it, you can't say anything about it. So Yeah, and, and totally. I imagine that that's an experience that so many people have coming to Kendama in the first place. I mean, that was my experience when I first saw Kendama as, as, a, as a toy. I was like, oh, this thing's ridiculous. Why would I ever want to play this? Why, why do you even want to play that? And then you yeah. pick it up and it's like all of a sudden your entire worldview is a little bit shattered because you realize how difficult, how creative and, and how innovative this, this small wooden simple yeah, toy is. simple wooden toy. And you don't realize like how much there really is to it. Yeah. Like I said, I, it's not like I was a bully or a, a mean guy before, but I just, I definitely would be really quick to judge. And we're right. just talking in real life sense. Like I would just be really quick to judge. Yeah. And I'd just be like just I a would, smaller perspective on the world. Yeah. And then I would also be really quick to shut things down that I didn't understand. You know sure. what I mean? Like when we're talking like I wasn't like a classic like jock mentality type thing, but I definitely yeah. was like not, you know, not as much of who I am now, which is like more accepting of completely everybody no matter what they do like you want a hula hoop like as long as you yeah, don't yeah. you know do so, anything crazy or murder anyone like i'm probably gonna be <laughs> cool with you you know yeah uh that's cool we'll, we'll dive a little bit more into to your today's self but i actually want to hit on something that you brought up so you were filming videos back in grade seven which is <laughs> yeah. or seventh grade i guess you guys call it seventh grade in the states we're up here in canada we're all like grade seven grade oh we don't, okay yeah, yeah it's yeah. all it's all different language so so different but but when you were when you were in seventh grade, uh, you were filming videos. Did you always have this ambition to just be on video and to grow and to have influence? Was that something that you I, idolized? Like you wanted that? Yeah, like I said, watching like Bam Margera, Johnny Knoxville, all those guys. Basically, what I saw was I just saw a bunch of friends and homies <clears throat> like having the most like fun time of their lives. And right. I wanted that and I wanted it to be on video because even back then I knew that if it's on video, you could always watch it again and relive that experience. And it's a lot easier to do that than like going back into your memory bank and trying to just remember it, mm -hmm. you know, in general. And we had a lot of fun making those kinds of videos, but then my laptop and my camera got stolen and yeah. like, I'm a kid, so I can't afford, you know, to like buy another camera and it wasn't until Kendama where I decided to buy another camera and start making videos again. But there's yeah. a video that you can go and look up. Oh God, I can't believe I'm saying this, but oh, it's, say it. it's called freshman throwback. And so there's a guy in this chat and his name's Philip Uberaga. And I, he's like not from Kendama. He's like one of my homies and he's in yeah. here, which is amazing. Sub Phil. And uh, he knows my homie Gus Carson's as well. And that's like the guy that got me into Kendama. And Phil like has probably seen this video, but there was a video back in the day called Freshman Throwback. And it's just me and Gus doing just random shenanigans as yeah. like a video. And it's like an Andy Milanakis style video just yeah. without the skits. It was just like basically us like hurting each other. 
<laughs> like I don't know, like throwing <laughs> shoes at each other. I'm drinking yeah. pencils with my head. We're like, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's but hilarious. But if you look it up, and it's the first one that you look up, it says freshman, freshman, freshman throwback. throwback. Yeah, and it's okay. me and this guy named Gus. It's I'm exposing myself, but that's awesome. I'll I'll try and find the link and I'll post that up on my yeah. story afterwards. And all and... the other kinds of videos though got deleted. Like they got reported. Oh, interesting. And it was because we would be we would be kind of jokesters, and it, it was we me and another guy, and we would like do skits that mm -hmm. were really bad skits, but it was like me and him talking, but it was like talking about embarrassing situations of other kids that were at our schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we were friends yeah. with them, so it's not like we were just bullying people. It was just they were our friends, and we were just kind of like exposing them on a YouTube video. And then yeah, sure. the videos got reported, and they're yeah. gone forever. Sure. Thank God, though, because those are really <laughs> embarrassing videos. Yeah, it, well, hey, if anyone in the chat can find those videos and send me the links to them, I'll make sure they get up on the story <laughs> afterwards. Um, oh, my okay. God. So, so Norks, I, you, you obviously kind of ended up embodying that vision uh, within Kendama specifically that you in seventh grade started this video, this like lifestyle influencer vlog character that <laughs> developed through your Kanama play. And you became probably one of the most famous individuals within the Kanama community, partly uh, in due wow. to your, your play style, partly in due, I think, to your creativity, innovation, uh, working with sweets, those early edits, and then running the sweets life and Nork's vlogs, all of these things that you became within the Kanama community, what you had early envisioned. What, did the, what was that like for you? Yeah. Uh, did you ever realize that? Like that you had become that? Yeah. They, it, it took me, it took me a while to just let go of like trying not to think about it or like trying. It's hard to say, like I would always be more like modest about it and just not think about it as much. Right. And then it was like after Singapore, after I went to Singapore was when it, when it all hit and I realized like, oh man, like I'm like starting to get bigger and Coop's starting to get bigger and Sweets is starting to get bigger. And mm -hmm. like, it just, I could feel it happening around where it just was a lot bigger than it used to be. And when you were, when we were in front of all those kids in Singapore, and it was like a three day long competition, but we have hundreds of kids following us like thousands of kids mm. actually following us. A lot of my follower base is still in Singapore. So Crazy. it's like, that's like where I realized like, oh my God, this is, this is like a lot bigger. And um, it actually wasn't until I helped out MC, one of the MKOs, when I like realized that I could do things on stage and not have stage fright, like announcing because mm -hmm. I'd always seen Jake Weens do it and Sweets always does it. And I was like, I bet, I bet that would be fun. Like, that's all I thought. I was like, I bet that'd be fun. But then I realized mm -hmm. like that I can actually harness that kind of skill as well and like go into that. And that's actually really fun for me to do, but that's kind of where I realized like, oh man, this might, I'm a little bit like bigger than just like your average person, but still you got to keep it like, it's still Kendama. So you're not, you're not like a celebrity yeah. or anything, but, and I've never thought of myself as a celebrity and I hate it so much whenever I would come home and like, I would go to like a bar or I'd be at a party and people wouldn't see me for a while cause I'm traveling. And it was like my homies and they're like, Oh, what's up? IG famous Norks. And I'm like, mm. no, like, I hate that. Like mm. I hated that just because it was like, no, no, no. I'm not trying to like, you know, I'm not trying to have that like be in my normal life as well type mm -hmm. thing where it's like people think it's a, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's hard to, but yeah. it would bother me because it's like, no, I'm like normal and it's not that like crazy. Sure. So, so in your growth uh, from, from where you started with Kanam and where you got to, did you ever realize a separation in yourself from like who you were and then who you were in front of the camera? Uh, and and was that a breakdown for you like even in what you're saying right now is with your friends like going yeah. and hanging out with them that that obviously became an issue later on so a lot of people don't know um but or maybe you do know i worked for sweets like for full time yeah moved out like made a huge life change while i was traveling for kendama what people don't realize about traveling for kendama is 
you're either going to have a job and you're going to be able to hold down a job and make time, get time off and, you know, only sometimes make it to ever so, you know, every few events or whatever. Mm -hmm. Whenever Sweets, like, came with an opportunity, like, yo, you want to go to Hawaii? Yo, you want to go to Vegas? Yo, you want to go to, you know, you want to come out to Minnesota? I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's because mm -hmm. where, like, I come from and, like, my, you know, my parents aren't rich or anything like that. And so I was like, is this the, t is this the opportunity for me to be able to like travel more and more so? And so I said yes to every single chance, but it got to the point where I had quit like three different jobs to try and make it happen, was getting different jobs. And then I told Sweets finally like, okay, we got to do something different here. Like, I'm either got to go full-time this way or full-time this way, you know, and do less traveling and less help. And then mm -hmm. I, when they did full Dama and we went full Dama, I was running the IG account. And this is where, like, I didn't realize it at the time, but this is where, like, the personality thing comes into play. Mm -hmm. Where I was just talking about this last night. It's, like, it's weird because when I'm at an event, and whether I'm there with a bunch of people from suites or just by myself or something like that, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm getting content throughout the day for suites, like did everything that I could for suites. It's Instagram, just like, and I wouldn't really post about me or anything like that. You know what I mean? It would just be more so like what's going on right? and uh, running the competitions. But it would be like every day that I'm traveling. And then afterwards I would, you know, not be using suites and I'd go to my profile and then I finally have time to like be myself and then post for myself. And there was a point where it was like, well, all I'm posting about on my page is like party, 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 have fun, have fun. This life looks glamorous, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I'm just like getting reckless with like my friends in Romania and stuff. But on my page, there's no Dama stuff going on really, except for it's like looking like I'm actually a Kendama rock star. Like I love and hate that term, but mm -hmm. it, that's like the life that I was trying to just show because I right. wanted kids to be like, Oh, so it's not just like, you know, a toy that you can be good at and go to competitions. You can be like, like this can be like a cool thing, like looked at as like a skateboarding thing or like, right. You know what I mean? Like that's the only objective, but there was a split personality going on there and I didn't realize it. Like I had a flip and like a switch that I would flip and it'd be like, there's Norks and there's Max. And I never gave time to my, like to Max. Right. Nobody's fault except for the situation and the circumstance and my, yeah. like my choosing of helping out sweets in that way. Like I don't blame anyone for anything. It just, I didn't realize that I was having a switch. And then I was like having this, really weird loss of identity thing going on. And when I, when I was traveling, you know how, like, so you know firsthand, like I'm super bad with my DMs and I'm super bad with communication. And it's just because I try my hardest to like stay off of my phone and live yeah. in the moment when I'm in it. And I don't like being glued to it. Like if I'm like interested in a girl, I would very much prefer that we just text seldom like not like yeah, yeah, yeah. throughout the day all day i don't want to you know that's just an example 100%. and um but i was having this like so this is my memory of a lot of the places that i've traveled to this is my memory is i'm watching my memory but i'm watching my memory in the phone because that's what i was doing right. and that's like all the stories that i posted yeah. and i hate that like that that's a thing because then i wasn't there i wasn't in the moment really i was just yeah robot and i'd go auto tune mode you know what i mean like i'd flip the switch and then norks would take over and it's like well who is norks like yeah like who is norks and then who is max it was it was just like yeah you're li living two separate lives there and and looking back i imagine if you probably feel this this missing out that there was a part of you that was there but then the real you didn't really get to experience some of those things because you were yeah. so busy behind the camera uh, yeah. recording things for other people but not actually taking in the moment for yourself right and like and like i i want to say this very like carefully 
I, no matter what, if you see me at an event, if you want to walk up to me, if you want to say hi, please like do it. And I'll give you as much time as, you know, anybody can allow or whatever. It doesn't matter. But when I'm at an event, there are some times where I do have to like step away. And it's mm -hmm. just because I'm not like trying to get away from anybody or whatever. It's just like, I need like a small, I find different moments to have like recharge moments. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like I will give all my time for kids. And we did that once in Singapore mm -hmm. where they didn't allow us to do signatures. They didn't allow us to do all this and this. And I went like, I went up to Cooper and I said, dude, I'm going to make an announcement on the microphone that we're not leaving Singapore until we sign everybody's kandamas. It was, it was so drastic of a rule that was happening that people were going home disappointed, like sad because they couldn't get pictures. It was some weird stuff going on. So we yeah. went behind like the people's back that were running it, who wanted to take us out to dinner right after they weren't really in it for Kanama. And so I knew that. And I was like, well, screw you guys watch this and we went on the mic and we're like meet us over here and we won't leave until we sign everybody and take pictures with everyone's stuff and we did that for like an additional two to three hours and film tricks like we did the whole nine yards because it's all for the kids like when mm -hmm. you when you think about it like from hawaii it's like do it for the keiki and it's like do it for the children and that's mm -hmm. what you have to understand is like when i'm at an event and i'm doing all this the only switch that I have is on and it's Norks and it's ready to go. And it's mm -hmm. like, I'm down to be a part of all this. And there's so many players that are like that as well, but it is, this is where I'm saying, like, I want to be careful with what I say because it is super exhausting. You yeah. know, it's not like, you know, players hate kids or anything like that. It's just like at, to a certain point, you, you, get, you can't stay on for forever. Yeah, it's because you're on. That's what I'm trying to say is like, people don't realize, but you're just on. And there's a lot of people that just go to events and they chill, you know. But yeah. like, there are some events where kids will like, want to film with you and like, you, you're doing everything, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then, of course, you're gonna give time to, you know, yeah. little Charlie that wants to just learn how to spike real quick, you know. So yeah, man. But oh. there's always just an on switch and it's, it's almost like it's never off. So there are points where, you know, you have to step away and it's like no bad blood yeah. out to anyone or whatever. And, um, but that was one of the hardest parts was like the loss of identity at an event, you know what I mean? And like mm -hmm. always being on. And then when my off switch was finally, but then all it looks like is that I'm just partying on my own Instagram and that's it. And like, I'm, I don't even play Kendama anymore. I'm just traveling and partying. That's mm -hmm. like what it started to look like. And I was like, even though I'm like doing that because in celebration, because these people at this shop want to celebrate the great sales that they had that day. And then they also want to celebrate the fact that you just made their whole community of kids really excited. So every place that you go to, they want to celebrate. And it might be the only time that they drink or have a party. But for me, mm -hmm. it was like, all the time so then i just started losing it and i was yeah. like where's the value like where's my contribution where and like value where can i where can i add value but without yeah. just partying all the time all, you know what i mean like yeah so yeah, that's what i've been trying to now also fix is yeah yeah we'll, we'll dive into thing. that i'm i i actually so I'm going to change the script here a little bit on, on where we're going, because I, I think that this is more important. I, I think that okay. this is a conversation that, that people need to hear uh, that, that I think sets a better expectation of what it actually means to influence and have influence and to be someone in the community that wants to grow like that, that there, there's another side to it. And I think you're hitting on something that's huge. Uh, both. I see it in, in so many people, man, I uh, thank you. The, this is a really important topic to hit. So uh, w kind of what I, what I want to ask is, is how, how, how do you see that growing yet being able to sustain something like that? Is it sustainable for you? Um, like, or what, what needs to change? What, right. because, yeah. Like, I think uh, even, even as you and I were talking leading up to this conversation, you were saying that, that there's a new Norks coming out. Uh, that there's yeah. there's some new change, hence the title of this episode. You know, the Phoenix rises. This idea of rebirthing. 
Did you uh, so did you know that I have a Phoenix like tattoo right here? No, or, what? Yeah, I have a that's like and that's like a part of me like this is a part of my God, I'm white up here. Jesus. <laughs> Look at that farmer's that's awesome. tattoo. But yeah, this I was I like, no damn. Idea. There's so, a Phoenix. I wonder I wonder if that was correlated. That's funny. No, um, I had no idea. So yeah, talk to me about about the change. I think I think we can put aside the conversation about your Tama a little bit and we can talk more about your your stories there if we have some time. But I think that this is important. What what do you see as as the rebirth of Max Norcross? It's, I've I've been through multiple rebirths, like basically. Yeah. Um, but you know, as you grow up and as you get older, you, just things change, and like your priorities change, or you know, you have different goals, and there's a lot of things that happen. Um, but with like traveling and you know when we're talking about split personalities and like it's either dama 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 or party 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 or both 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 like i started realize i stopped doing the vlogs after i really put a hiatus on doing the vlogs after a trip that i took to africa which really like kind of opened my eyes to the fact that like of what pure happiness and true happiness really is. Mm. And I wasn't, I wasn't having that. Like I, I was putting on a mask. So it was like for so long, like at an event, I would be smiling through it. But what I was doing was I was escaping like my real life problems and like things that were back home that I didn't think about because I'm now at a an event. So you know, turn on Norks. That's what I'm saying. Like mm -hmm. you got to consistently turn on. And so the thing that I'm trying to change is like, it's not in a selfish way, but I want to listen to myself and like, mm. it, who am I, you know, like, and what kind of contribution and value do I want to add from here going forth with the Kendama community and not just shrugging off that I can be a leader of the community and just, you know, like not being like, Oh yeah, it's whatever about it. But like, I, I do have somewhat of a voice and if I can do it in a better, more positive way than I have been doing it because it's what I actually believe in, like with never giving up, you know, and like every, all the good things about Kendama, like about how you should try a million different times because at least one time you're going to get it. And then, you know, instill that into your real life. And when I go to school assemblies and preach all of that, I can't even listen that to like, I can't even listen to that myself sometimes mm. because then when a trip would end, I'd be like going home and then I'd be left with my actual thoughts. I'd be like depressed about it. You know what I mean? And whatever the yeah. circumstance is, whether it's family issues or whatever, it doesn't matter. But what I'm trying to do now is like all the problems in the past or like issues that I faced in the past, I want them to not be a burden or something that I'm scared to look back at. I want to look at them and like understand why those things were happening and learn from those mistakes and like use that to bo like boost me going forward from here on out. And so with like videos, even just in a small change with videos, I'm like really trying hard to like, even just in real life, just not drink as much and like not, not be showing a lot of the party life anymore because like we get it, you know, like party 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 it's fun it's but like where's more value with like the core values that i believe in what do i believe in what do i what do i want people to like know that i believe in you know like what kind of what things matter to me that maybe matter to somebody else and like i've been i've been getting a little bit more real about not just showing the cool norks Mm -hmm. And being a little bit more vulnerable and like showing that there is a side that isn't fun and it isn't smiles, you know? And it's like, yeah. I, I struggle with that a lot. And like, yeah, I did. have like crippling anxiety sometimes, but, and it, and it all just gets turned off when I'm at an event. You would never know. You would never know. And that's like yeah. the scariest part. Cause I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are like that. And yeah, they, I think so many that yeah, we put it's... on this, this fake exterior, especially on social media, especially in front of people. And then we return home and it's, it's a totally different life that we live. 
and, and finding where that negotiation between both of those lives are and how to be more vulnerable and how to show off actually is so freeing. Yeah. And it's like, like Colin said, like Norks loves to party in the comments. And it's, it's like, yeah, I do because I, I like having that fun time and I like that everyone's having, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, I just turned 28. I'm trying to figure out like, where I'm going in life, what I'm doing and what's, what's like the, what's the purpose. And then what's the stamp that I want to leave behind, not just for my image. Like, I don't, I don't care about what other people will think or like, you know, obviously I'm conscious of it, but I'm not like letting it run my life. But what, what the stamp in history, like, what do I want to leave? Is, do I want to leave just something that's only fun? You only see the cool part or something that actually was like more impactful. And then like, even when it comes down to videos, even if it's not like motivational videos or whatever, just better content than just going, pulling out a camera, drinking, partying, and then there's a little bit of Kendama in it. There's like, mm. there's no value in that really. I mean, it, it's fun and it looks fun. But mm. when we really think about it, like for me in general, it's like, I want to make this change so badly. And now I can do that because I'm not traveling as much. So there's been a lot of time to just self-reflect kind of about where do I want to go with just myself. And it's not about Kendama in general. Like it, it's just about me myself because I, I leave myself behind so, so much. I care about every single person before I care about myself at the end of the day. And sometimes that's a bad thing for me because yeah. I'm not listening to myself. And I'm like, I talked about this last night. Like sometimes we talk to each other and there might be this person that has issues. My favorite person in general to me is some random person in some random encounter, which usually happens at like a grocery store or mm. a 7-Eleven or a bar. And Sweets is like, Sweets can tell you, I'll talk to anybody no matter what. My favorite person to talk to is a random person that doesn't know anything about me. I don't know mm. anything about them. They're, they bring up some, like, they start going open book and start yeah. talking about the crazy thing that they're dealing with in their life. And then I'm talking how to help them. And as I'm talking it out, I'm realizing that I should be saying that to myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and so when I do, when I, when I realize that I'm like, I need to listen to myself sometimes. And I, I never do. And so it's more about like, I guess, self care and trying to be okay with, you can't love anyone or anything fully until you love yourself. And that's a mm. very like hard skill to be accepting of yourself and like love yourself to a point where, you know what I mean? Like it's been a very, it, the balance, right? Mm -hmm. The tipping point. So I'm trying to figure out what the balance is with all that. And mm -hmm. so I don't know. Wow, I can just like ramble. Sorry about that. No, don't don't apologize. This is awesome. Uh, I think that this reflecting on this is so important for people to see and hear. And this is more than just Kanama. This is life. This is something that, yeah. that I think people just need to hear and reflect. Because I imagine, regardless of how large of a following anyone has, these are the same wrestles that I think so many of us have even if it's in our daily life, our work life, that we prioritize, you know, what other people think of us and see of us, then we actually prioritize what we think of ourselves and being true to ourselves. Like, who, who are we? Uh, and like, yeah. That. It's, it's weird. Cause like, it's, it, you know yourself, like you see yourself in the mirror all the time, but do you really, like when you look in the mirror, do you really see yourself or do you see the image that you just want to portray out to the world? Yeah. Like what, what do you see? D is that? And so like that was happening and I was looking, it's like I was on some crazy, like, you know, psychedelic trip looking yeah. into the mirror one day and it was just like, and I was like completely sober and I was looking in the mirror and I'm like, who are you? Like, where, where, where are you going? Like, what are you doing? And sometimes when those moments happen where I'm like feeling my most lost and I don't know what I'm doing and like, I was very reckless on trips too, where I would like climb on the sides of buildings, I'd climb up on top of cranes. And like, I just, I didn't care what was going on, but I just did it because I wanted to feel something. Hmm. 
And it's like, that's messed up. Like something, yeah. something in my head is not okay if I'm doing that all the time. You know what I mean? And it's like, it scares the people around me whenever I like yeah. do that kind of thing and walk on the edge of a roof. Like, you know what I mean? And so I, now that I've had time to reflect, it's just, who are you? And that's, that's the biggest question, but you're, you're never going to really fully, there are people that are very comfortable in their own skin and like they're, they know themselves, but that's like just a constant daily like thing. Cause like I said, you we're always changing as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to adapt to yourself as totally. well. I just don't think that people understand that, especially when I was get that I gave everything that I had to Kendama. Like I quit jobs. I did all this. I did mm -hmm. this and this. And I just only did it for like Kendama in general, you know, is that I was left my own self behind. So whatever you saw at an event or whatever you see, like if it was anything bad or good, just know that at that point, I also wasn't myself. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. whether it was good or bad, like, but my true down to the core self is like this little like softy that cares and loves about everybody. Mm. But it's just, I, I do that more so than myself and it's not okay because I feel like that's why I'm trying to be more vulnerable because people message me sometimes and they're like, it was actually really great for, to like see that you also, you know, kind of go through anxiety or like struggle with this. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how important that was to like, be vulnerable and show that yeah. because I was like, that's going to be whack. People are going to think that's, you know, I was about yeah. to cuss, but it's because I care about it so much. It's like, people are going to think that's super whack, like that you're yeah. weak or something. Like don't show that part of you. But then like the more and more that I show it, the more and more accepting people are. And that, that makes me feel really good. Honestly, like makes me feel better about it. And then like, some people that I have responded in DMs, like there was somebody in my DMs that was saying like that they wanted to like give up and stuff like that. I'm not going to expose at all who they are, yeah. but I was like, dang, like I did not realize that like I'm the one that you're opening up to about this. And it's probably because I'm somebody that they know of, but I'm also a complete stranger way easier to yeah. say it to somebody than like somebody you grew up with in high school. You say that. And then, the person from high school is like, what? You know, and like judges you because mm -hmm. that's what you think is going to happen. And I feel like just opening yourself up more to people is mm -hmm. a, definitely a route that I'm trying to go more so of as well because if you close off the wall and close off the barrier, mm -hmm. you're also doing that to yourself. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I I think I think you've hit it right. Uh, we we have about twelve minutes left before Instagram kicks us off here, and, oh, okay. and, and I think I think what you've done is is really illuminate what I think so many of us struggle with, uh, regardless of of who you are, and I think you've also given us a good good idea of some steps that we can even take as individuals and in, and in how to you know truly figure out a little bit more about ourselves. That, yeah. that we need to learn to be more vulnerable if we want to see growth in ourselves. We need to be able to, to open up and to share what's actually going on, to show who we truly are. Because if all we do is live a life where we're showing off what other people want to see, that's just going to slowly, yeah, slowly drain us. And it's so fake. Right? It's it kills us. Your viewers, and it's fake to you. The most importantly, it's fake to you. That's, that's exactly the main thing that I've been trying to hit, that hopefully people now understand that like during all that and even no matter what kind of fame, I can't even imagine what a real celebrity goes through, but like, <laughs> yeah, those, those, these people also have struggles, no matter what, how glamorous it looks, just understand there's something going on too, like where they struggle with and it might, whatever the situation, but everyone struggles with something and you have to be very conscious mm -hmm. of that. And like, very sensitive to that because sometimes the way that people act, especially if they're like kind of a, you know, douchebag or like a really mean person, maybe there's a real rooted reason and try to be more understanding, not just write them off and never want to talk to them ever again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, totally. So totally. Well, in the last five minutes here, you know what? I, I don't know if we're going to do much Q and a here. What I, what I want to do in the last five minutes before we wrap up is, is ask, 
what what this new Kanama means to you and why it's so important. I think that from my perspective, this is probably one of the deepest Kanamas in, in the market in terms of the amount of storytelling that goes into it, that everything yeah. on here is symbolic. And, and you illuminated a little bit of that on, on the, the Sweets Twitch channel. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about some of the stories, but in, in about three to four minutes, talk to me a little bit about why this Kanama is so important to you and, and what it stands for. The, this whole thing, like this is going to be my last pro model. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, after this, but this is like, I want to make room. I've already done the pro life stuff. So I want to make room for people that are on our team to deserve a mod as well. Um, so I wanted everything that I, like is my Kendama experience in one, you know, and every, the reason why I'm into Kendama and why I'm sponsored is because of the, you know, crappy stuff that I've had to go through which is like mm -hmm. getting hit in the face of the baseball bat and then re dealing with another thing with getting hit by a taxi. So the overall is how you are heading like head on facing your adversities and being okay with them to where they don't haunt you anymore, but it's something that you can just like live with and use as like a tool to be better. You know what I mean? Like it fuel you into ascending past all the adversities. So mm, that's what mm -hmm. the whole thing is about is just adversities and overcoming that and how to do that. And so overall it turns into negative things turn into a positive, like mm. at the very end of everything, it's all positive vibes and positive energy. And everything that's on this is like a crazy adversity thing, especially this with my sister and like going out and traveling for her and helping her like go through some really terrible things with somebody passing away that was very close to her. And then mm. the, like where she's describing the stuff and this apron is here and then that happened. And the fact that the blue orange pink is there as like a happy accident. And then that that guy's birthday was also the day that my uh, pro mod got dropped there's like all these weird coincidences, mm -hmm. but the whole thing is just about like all the worst things that could possibly happen, the lowest lows and remembering where you're at from the lowest lows and then rising yeah. up. That That's all that it is. Like your episode, like the rise of the Phoenix. And it's like, that's what this is supposed to be for other players as well Is you start yeah. here. And then at the end with the mod, you're hopefully going up this way because you're going to learn new tricks. You're going to, do new things. You're going to like, look really cool. I like, yeah, you know what I mean? Your yeah. life will get better. That's what this is all about. Yeah. You're, you're putting to death an old self, the adversities in your life. And you're taking that and saying, no, I'm going to rise up. I'm, I'm going to overcome this and put this, put this down uh, and, and live, live in, and in light. Yeah. Live in light of the adversity. And I think that's beautiful. I think this, this Tama, this whole Ken is a beautiful design that is more than just a design of a Kendama. It's more than just a Kendama that plays good and it has great tracking, it's on a nice shape. It's a Kendama that actually speaks life, that it teaches us something about ourselves and can actually be a tool for teaching other people about them. And I think that's beautiful. Uh, you you make it sound so cool like the way that you're <laughs> the way that you're putting it I'm like blushing because it's like I can't that's really cool the way that you just said that. It makes me feel really nice and good actually. I'm glad that everything came together and people are loving it. That's the biggest yeah. thing as well. Like a um, lot of, a lot of work went into it. Yeah. I, I, a lot of people have been asking in the DMS and even in the Q and A and we won't take time to answer many of the questions. I got one that I'm going to answer from our friend Haley Bischoff uh, in a moment here that she put in, Bish. but people are, people keep asking uh, about the text, this, this lettering on top. What does it mean? I, I've noticed that I haven't really, touched on that a lot um and that's like probably the main thing of what it's about uh the the text at the top oh that is a gaper gouge but um uh the text yeah. you see that that's such a yeah. bad gouge we got it the we text got on the this top says quick. we got five minutes never give up off. okay this says never give up and never it's just up. never give up never give up and it's honestly like when you feel low yeah. and you're feeling at your lowest, you, you have to keep reminding yourself, like never give up because there is, it, it goes, yeah. there's more better things coming always. Yeah. 
You want to know what I love about that? I love that it's on the very top of the Dhamma, that it stands on top of all of the adversity. Yeah. Oh, see? Some happy accident stuff like, oh, dude. Yeah. Wow. Well, that said, I want to ask one question here from Haley Bischoff, because I think it wraps up our conversation well, and then uh, I'll wrap things up here. Uh, in a nutshell, how do you picture Kandama in your life in 10 years? Love you, Norks. Purple Heart. Love you, From bitch. Haley Bischoff. Uh, she is grinding right now uh, on her Instagram. Go check it out. She's having a lot of fun. Uh, oh, yeah. She, um, she is amazing. Yeah, she's a good person. Um, in 10 years, I Kandamas are going to be very prominent in my life still. Uh, but I think that in 10 years... I'm going to be like one of the, you know, godfathers of Kendama, what you can say, because I got lucky into the pioneering stage of it and getting sponsored by Sweets. So I'll be watching Kendama until the day that I die grow, and I'll also be involved with it no matter what. So in 10 years, maybe I have a wife, maybe I have kids, I don't know. But I definitely want to be very involved, and I'll be behind the scenes no matter what, like mm -hmm. helping out the next group or the next generation of whoever to succeed mm -hmm. and i want to like pass the torch on and have other kids and other people experience these kinds of things cool. but i want to help them and give them the tools so that they don't have a loss of identity during the process yeah you know what i mean that's awesome so i think that that's where i want to be with kendama in 10 years that's awesome well, Norks, hey, thank you so much for coming on the review today. Uh, this, I think, is, is a unique episode. Oh, we episode. got deep. Uh, we got deep. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, and I think the people that tuned in live especially, uh, there has been so many comments coming in, so many good questions. Uh, and I think I, think I want to leave that there. I want to allow those questions to sit and allow you to ask yourself those questions as you're tuning in. Ask the same questions that Norks is asking himself uh, and ask more. Uh, go ahead and shoot people DMs. Shoot that person that you need to get vulnerable with a DM and be like, hey, can we go for coffee and chat? Uh, I, just, I just need to talk. Uh, yeah. People, like, you, get, you guys got to get out there and, and be vulnerable and ask the hard questions because you're going to be so much better off for it. I learned a lot from this, Norks, about yourself, about myself, and I hope that the people tuning in also learned a lot about themselves as well. Yeah, that I, said, wish we, I wish we could be longer. I oh. wish we could do it more. You're like... You know, honestly, we should have conversations just on the side and not Absolutely. like, obviously, you know, you're a really great person, dude. You are a really <laughs> nice, great person. I appreciate and, it. Like, you're so wholesome, man. I love <laughs> it. You make me feel it. really good, even, even about talking about deep stuff. So that was that really said, nice. Um, we have three minutes left before we get kicked off. Uh, if you guys have not purchased a Norks mod, I recommend it. Not for its playability, though it plays amazingly, uh, but because you should keep it in your life as a testament to these stories uh, and remind yourself daily. Uh, secondly, I also want to remind you guys that we have another review coming up next week. And, and I wanted to highlight Haley Bischoff's comment because next week, Haley Bischoff is joining the review. And so we're going to be talking about her journey as well. We're going to be talking a lot about what she's up to in the Kanama world. I'm really excited for that story next week. And I hope you guys are as well. As always, uh, this episode is going to be up on IGTV afterwards for you guys to share. We'd love for you guys to share the story because I think this is a story that people need to hear. Uh, additionally, it will be uploaded onto your favorite podcasting networks like Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, and the like. Uh, one thing that I would really appreciate from you guys down in the chat is if you can hop on Apple Podcasts, give it a quick rating. You know, let me know if you like it or don't like it. Let me know what could be better. Uh, leave a review. That really helps to grow the podcast and reach more people in the Kanama community because truly the Kanama community is actually pretty big and not that many people know about the review and not that many people know about the different things that are happening. So if you guys could do that for me, I would really appreciate it. Give it a bad rating if you don't like it. Give it a great rating if you do. Uh, just rate it. It helps so much. Um, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Norks, for Dude, hopping on. You. This thank was you. very much appreciated. No, this is amazing. I really appreciate you even just taking the time. Hey, it is my pleasure. As always, Norks, I hope that you start drinking coffee. And for the rest of you guys yeah. in the chat, uh, I hope you guys keep your cup full and always stay caffeinated and hit every single whirlwind check ever given to you. That said, thank you guys for tuning into the review, and I will see you guys next week. Peace. See you, Norks. <laughs>